Hello, Eric. Thank you for joining me today. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, can you please say uh, who you are, what you're doing, and um, you know what brought us together? Because I mean, m music. Anyway, just introduce yourself a little bit. Where you're coming from, what you're doing, and why you're doing what you're doing. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Eric Collier. I uh, I'm a musician, filmmaker, and designer from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and uh, I'm behind the industrial project called ne Necrodisco. Um, I started Necrodisco uh, about, a, mm, about a year and a half ago and uh, came out with uh, my first EP and, and then just came out with my second EP this past October. So um, we we crossed paths because I submitted I submitted one of my new singles to your uh radio station or your profile on submit hub so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah so here we are here we are exactly um so so how um maybe maybe give give us a little bit more background um uh you know usually musicians don't fall from the sky so uh where 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 are your roots where you're coming from music wise and why you know um Uh, industrial. I mean, this is what I love, so uh, that's why we are talking. But um, yes. you know, it's not the most obvious. If you want to get famous, you know, do some R and B or hip hop or something, sure. and uh, yeah. you would have an easier time. So just tell us where you're coming from and why you do it. Yeah, well, I've always I've always loved industrial music. Pretty, I, I've always been like a more of a surface level fan up until just a couple of years ago. Um, obviously, like Rob Zombie, White Zombie, um, Ram Ramstein, and you know these bigger commercial industrial acts. As a as a kid growing up, I was into those. They were pretty accessible bands to be into. I, I growing up, I was surrounded by music and film. Um, my dad was in hair metal bands. Really? So cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my dad was a uh, my dad was a vocalist in like hair metal bands. Um, you know, uh, bands like Motley Crue. Like that that was more more uh, you know shallow hair metal, but still fun, still fun. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I I grew up with that influence, and then um, my uncle, my my dad's brother, was he's really into music, but also very into horror. So I grew up sort of around these dark elements of art and um i na naturally like industrial is a very dark form of music or that's how i interpret it and uh yeah so it feels like home to me now but how i got here how i got here is sort of a funny uh sort of a funny journey in the beginning uh in high school i was in uh, a thrash metal band for four years so I was doing a lot of thrash and um, towards the end, it was getting more towards death thrash. Um, and unfortunately that was so long ago that this was before even streaming services and we were so young too, but we, we did play a lot of shows and I got a lot of show performing ex experience. I was the, uh, I was the vocalist and, and rhythm guitarist. So and we also did a lot of covers too. So we, we had like a, a thrash cover set and we were like really young. So, so a lot of bars liked having us because um, it was a good combination with drunk adults, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, so I got, I got a lot of show experience and we played a lot with uh, older, older bands and some of the relationships I made when I was performing as a 15, 16, 17 year old, I still have today here in the metal scene. Now I'm, I'm still pretty active As, as far as an audience member in the metal scene here in Minneapolis, mm -hmm. obviously with coronavirus, I, you know, I haven't been to a show in a while, so it almost feels like I'm not, but before all this, um, yeah, I, I go to shows at least, at least every other weekend, if not every weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I, that band sort of fell apart. Eventually I, I'm still close friends with a few people I was uh, working with. And, um, I, I sort of ventured out, from thrash and metal uh well i guess not metal but i ventured out from thrash and got more into uh like metalcore and uh deathcore 
and it was a really trendy, it was a very trendy time, especially when I was young. <clears throat> so I was pretty impressionable. And a lot of my friends going to a lot of those shows was pretty fun. And I still have a soft spot for it, but I've definitely, I've definitely like rounded out my music tastes a little bit more. Um, so yeah, I, I did do a project that was more of a like progressive metalcore project called Waking Dormancy. And like that, I mean, no one paid attention to that. What I mean, our friends, our friends and uh, some, I don't know, some oddballs that found it, liked it. Um, it was more like techie math, techie math metalcore. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's tough to, um, you know, uh, to swallow. I, I have to admit, I'm a simple person, you know, I need uh, <laughs> four to yeah. the floor and, you know, just uh, right, right. give me easy stuff and, and math core. Oh, no. It's... Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, um, I obviously I grew up I grew up loving it, so I still love it. But um, as, as a writer now, I'm I'm definitely on a similar page. Of what you just talked about is more simple, straightforward, more digestible. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I I ended up going to college after high school, and when I got there, there was no metal, n no metal heads, no metal musicians. Not that I could find immediately. And I ended up like getting into, which is not, was not expected or planned, but I ended up working with a lot of like these old school hip hop heads. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really straight. And I, I was legitimately really into old school hip hop and like sampling mm -hmm. for a few years. Um, like these, these guys were using MPCs and sampling like vinyl records and mm -hmm. uh, like scratching and... I have an like, MPC here as well, you know. With, uh, anyway, I'm not going to yeah. show... But anyway, yeah, I, I'm using MPC too because I, I still like the old old school stuff. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's something to be said with the art form of, you know, that process. And uh, I, I was really fascinated with that process. And I, I did work and create my own hip hop music too but i was just never confident enough to really like get behind it and post it it was more mm -hmm. um it was more like a I proof guess, of concept like or something like or, yeah, or you yeah. know that it you can felt, yeah. showed yourself felt that felt you can it. do it mm -hmm. yeah yeah and I, i i spent more time than i'd even like to admit on the music and maybe someday i will put it out but right right now it's not it's not a uh a wish of mine but anyways i ended up i ended up uh i actually ended up living in germany for six months for school oh so you want to uh, switch to german uh <laughs> <laughs> you could you could do a rammstein cover or something you know <laughs> oh, right right that'd be very american of me <laughs> mm -hmm. um yeah i lived in darmstadt for six mm -hmm. months okay um Yeah, and I, while I was there, obviously I was with a lot of uh, foreign exchange students, which was cool. But like a goal while I was there was to meet other metalheads and to sort of explore them, um, explore the metal scene there. And and it, it's weird. This doesn't explain how I get back into industrial, but it had a huge effect on me. Um, I I ended up meeting the uh this group of punks in the park mm -hmm. um they were just like i literally just went up to them and asked if i could hang out with them <laughs> and um they i mean they were sort of weird about it but whatever and then i was talking to them they were really into punk they were uh um they're they actually have a punk band called zigzag mm -hmm. and yeah so they ended up inviting me to a party that night and and uh It was like, man, it was such a cool experience. I ended up going to a house show um, in this like giant house with like 20, it was like 20 people living there. Um, and they had one giant community space. And there was just, I don't know, it was, it was like a, it was just like a center of culture. And mm -hmm. it, it sounds cool like an thing. occupied house, we would call it, or ein besetztes Haus in German, you know, yeah. but, but, they, but they kind of took over a, a, an empty property and just said, you know, squatted basically in there and, and just take, right. took it over and say, this is ours now. And usually um, it depends on the city. 
we kind of um, if we don't you know we don't force them out right away and let them leave right. it for for a little bit so we had this here in in my hometown as well we had a few um buildings which were occupied by punks yeah. and and you know left uh, leaning persons and uh, anyway all these people i guess you know what i mean and yeah. uh, and yeah and they have kind of they, they they make concerts there and stuff mostly you know really uh, underground grindcore, crustcore, and stuff. So something like this they play there mostly. Yeah, it se- th- that does sound like what it was, but it also seemed a little bit more structured. They said there was like ten girls and ten guys or oh, something. They had okay. Like even and and the rooms were nice. Like they were yes, they were punks, but they were they were also mat- <laughs> you know mature adults. They had jobs. <laughs> German punks, you know. <laughs> German punks. Right. We we know where the vacuum cleaner is uh, apparently. Right. Yeah. So I, I still talk to them and, and they're in, very into goth music as well. Mm-hmm. And I think I, I have always, you know, I've always been in, as I was into industrial surface level goth music, uh, Depeche Mode and uh, Echo and the Bunny Man, just like, you know, post punk and, but I was never like super into it. And I mm-hmm. wouldn't call myself like a goth music head where I'm listening to a lot, but after these experiences, I started really getting into music for the atmosphere, less about le- less about specific elements. Whereas, like in metalcore, you know, breakdowns. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you have a, such a. You know, that's that's my a problem. You know, I don't want to. Um, you know, it's nice that you that you uh, tell all this, but but what's this is exactly my problem with metalcore. It's kind of so. It has it's, it's so schematic. It's so it has right. to be like this, and and oh, now comes the door. Ah, oh, okay, and then and then it goes up again. And y- you know, it's kind of like oh, it's a blueprint of a blueprint of a blueprint of a mm-hmm. blueprint of a blueprint of a blueprint. And this is, oh, you know, um, that, that's I I like it, but I cannot hear it again and again and again. Always the right. same uh, formula. That's no, my yeah, issue with and, it. And my experiences in Germany, like really, you know, and I was. 21 22 at the time i thought i was an adult you know and that my taste had really formed but i was like wow like how have i not like listened to music in this way and Mm -hmm. specifically there was there was a moment too where i i was taking a class and the class we went to a the ed the edding how do you say the edding villa it was like this it was just like this old like this old mansion Mm -hmm. that was like gutted and turned into a, a metal punk disco venue i don't know it was really cool and it was right okay. by the it was right by the um the flats i was staying in mm-hmm. and for this class we had to go to a black metal show and we all went i mean and there was only two or three metal heads in the class the rest were all uh you know people who didn't even listen to metal at all so it was probably okay. way more of an experience for them or more culture shock, but we went to the show and then we were going to do, we would have to create our own projects based off of our experience at the show. And obviously the teacher was, was a huge black metal head. So, mm-hmm. and that was another experience too, where I was like, wow, like at first I went there and no one's moving, you know, like black metal, but people are very still and like soaking in the music. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, I don't get this. This doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I want to see people moshing and, like, mm-hmm. showing energy. And then it, like, just struck me that night after, like, leaving the show. Because I was li- originally thinking, like, oh, this is lame. Like, these people are lame. Like, they're not showing any, like, appreciation. But then, like, that night I was like, wow. Like, this is, it's not even about that. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's about just feeling it, you know. And I don't know. It was it was a really cool ex- a cool experience where it like rewired some of the ways that I think about music. And then it in turn rewired the way I write music. Mm-hmm. So coming back from Germany and, uh, uh, you know, reconnecting with my hip hop friends, but then graduating, you know, I was like, suddenly I have like this metal background and then I have this almost, very like this background in making music through noises and sounds and sort of this more like mechanical uh mechanical view of music Mm -hmm. or like noises and then suddenly i'm i i land i i like land an industrial band i don't even remember what i was listening to but it was like an 
industrial playlist and i'm like wow this is like it's like a combination of the thrash i used to play but then mixed with like this these noises sort of like the hip-hop i was just spending years mm -hmm. messing around mm -hmm. with and i was like this is where i was meant to be because okay. it's like i don't know no, I, I completely get it because this yeah. is actually you know the the um industrial kind of moved away from what it has been i mean Uh, industrial, like if you use Einsturz and the Neubauten, who really used, you know, sledgehammers and, and stuff uh, and, and old uh, oil uh, drums to make the music, to, to use right. it, you know, or like early Deepesh Mode where they took uh, the stuff what um, Einsturz and the Neubauten um, recorded for, um, what was it? Um, People are people, you know, you hear all these, these noises right. or something. This is kind of what was the early or real industrial it was industrial sounds sampled and put together and and used as as music you know used as thing so um so you you kind of got through all of this you got back to the back to the roots actually to to the real industrial because today industrial when i say okay industrial metal i think of you know <laughs> um heavy guitars you know like rob zombie white zombie that's kind of industrial metal aesthetic x or something you know really um moving stuff and there is maybe a little bit of uh of keyboard synth stuff in it but it's mm -hmm. it's more metal rock kind of uh, a little bit monotonous or something you know right. um that's that's what industrial is today but what it really was or has been and can be again um uh could yeah you know anyways it's very um interesting how you know your 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 journey um to to go from there because now i understand your music also better because um uh leading up to to our conversation even though i'm not that prepared i i listened to the songs i could find and they were quite um different you know um uh, I, i have only now two in my mind um where the videos were on two and and you know one even didn't had a guitar in it so uh right, it was yeah. just electro and stuff and it was like yeah i mean it's uh it's so quiet and and anyway so yeah um it sounds really cool you you found your calling basically yeah and and i I am I am very into industrial, but at the same time, I'm still like learning the genre myself, and like I owe it to the genre to dig into these older acts to like see the roots. And I'm still, I still wouldn't even call myself an expert, even though I've been, you know, it takes years to really like to give these albums your authentic time, you know, and to mm -hmm. like soak them in. And I, I'm really that's the way I like to consume my music is to like to like put my energy into listening to these. So like I, what I'm saying is like, I, d I could just, you know, scan through all these old artists and say that I know them and say that, you know, that how they impacted me. But like, I, I don't like to do that. I, I like to uh, take my time sort of artist by artist. So yeah, no, yeah I mean, I, I can completely understand. So just to enjoy the journey, you know, it's, and, and this right. is you, you, you are an artist, uh, obviously. So, you know, you never finish this journey you know it's always you can always learn more because right. then if you get to to the early industrial artists you will find when they have been um influenced by other things there was uh what was it this french movement nouvelle vague or something where we where we used the first tape recorders to put things together it was really weird what we did music wise but it was kind of the first sampling stuff what we did and, and you know you, you, once you get into there what i'm saying is there will be a vast oh, you, you know you, you can go in 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 10 directions at the same time it will be right. really really crazy what you what you can find there and so I'm absolutely with you. That's what I'm saying in so many words. That just take your time, enjoy it, because you will, and um, you know, some feel things you will like and some you won't. So that's absolutely fine. But it's, um, it's I, I, I like you. I like this journey to discover new things. You know, that's why I like what I'm yeah. doing. You know, I'm we are talking now because I like to discover artists, and I found you, and I was like, oh man, this is uh, I like that. And, and and with my radio show, you know, I I always get new music, and you know, I'm I'm in a, in a good spot, so you know, for me, I, I get it. Uh, I don't have to search so much for it. But if I'm you know more interested, then we do what we're doing now. Then I want to get to know 
the person behind the music. And and sure. like I said, with you, it was kind of now that you t tell me your your background and your journey, it completely makes sense that that you have so different things in your music and your your songs sound differently, uh, and and not you know one. I, I guess if if I may say that it's um, you're still finding your voice in in the oh, in the yeah. genre and and uh, with all your background, you know, I think it's even better because. Um, You can put in some hip hop things. You know, you you can kind of breathe new air into into the thing because one thing you can say about industry is kind of what, what it is now. It's also very formulaic. You know, uh, when when mm. I when I bash on uh, um, metalcore, the you know um, I don't know if you know the German band Eisbrecher. No, you I don't them? believe yeah. so. Anyway, it's um, they're really good. I really like them, but it's kind of. You know, we we um, copy themselves quite a lot. I mean, they always have something new in it and stuff, so it keeps it fresh. You know, I don't want to. I really like them, but it's kind of like, uh, you know, you know what you get. <laughs> it's kind of right, right. no surprises. That's that's it. You know, and uh, and I guess with you, um, with your all your influences, you you will put in new things and you will try out and and. Some people will like it, and some won't, you know. But this is the cool stuff on music, as I see it. That there is no right or wrong. There is just something you like right. or you don't, and we, we can not argue about taste, you know. Uh, and that's good. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, thank you very much. This was quite um, extensive to to get there. I be before we get more into your music and and your approach, um, you're also a filmmaker. Let's talk about this uh, for a second. Um, I saw that you put out one movie already. Is it a, a, a short movie or a, a full length movie? Because you know it's important. Uh, you know how how it's classified. Um, yeah, it, I, I put out um, two short films. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I have sort of cursed myself by having a lot of these hobbies where it makes it hard for me to <laughs> hammer down on one of them. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, like my, my, my film work is sparse, but, but I do take a lot of pride in it. And growing up, I was, aside from making music, I was doing like short horror films. They're horrible, but you know, like. That's why I called horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, of course, they're already bad. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge horror movie junkie. Like I, and I, I grew up with that, and that's a safe spot for me. And that that's really what I wanted to use this project as too, as an outlet for me to make music and then create a story behind it. And like a lot, sometimes when I am writing these songs, I already have like a story that's building. And I think, opposed to working with another. Um, video or another film director or music video videographer like there there could be some interesting outcomes where i have all these things already wired together mm -hmm. um yeah so i i've come out with two short films uh one's called the black record and one is called skeleton it's actually a i i made it in a japanese course And uh, it's in Japanese, but I, I worked with a couple Japanese uh, artists or a couple Japanese uh, classmates of mine who helped me do it. So it was actually for a class. I just went way overboard for a project mm -hmm. and made a whole short film. But um, yeah, so and then and then the two music videos that are out for Necro Disco right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, those were these were projects that took months to make. Mm hmm. And as I was finishing the EP, I was making the music video. So like the the pro the EP was really like that music video is really a part of it too. You know, I was working on it just as long um, with the tracks. So yeah, and I like I don't I still feel like I'm an amateur, even though I have good equipment and I've been doing it a while, and pe I'm probably better than I or I'm more like technically skilled as a filmmaker than i would like to believe that i am but i'm i'm trying to tell stories and that's that's one thing i really want to do with my music is tell stories and um sort of repackage pain that pain and darkness that i've been through in my life and put it in a very cinematic 
entertaining story that can, I don't know, that mm -hmm. can be interpreted differently mm -hmm. by who, depending on who's viewing it. Yeah, no, I, I, I can clearly see that because I, I, you know, just me personally, of course, uh, I appreciate um, videos when there is a story in there. I mean, um, when, when, when I see more than just a performance or something, because uh, right. you, I, I don't mind if you cut in a performance or so, you know, um, the, uh, you know, whatever. But um, if there is a story in there, I, I like it more, you know, even if there's no payoff, because in one of your videos, there this guy um, uh, carries the chest around. I don't right. even know if there is a is a if there is a payoff for this, but it's, it it keeps you engaged and you you watch until the end, you know. So and and this is this is how, what a you know you as you are a movie maker, um, you know how to um, this is how you should engage your your uh, audience that they stick with it until until the end, you know, that we're not just dropping off. Ah, you know, nah, I know where, where this ends and stuff. Um, yeah. And but there was another movie I found. Uh, anyway, if I, I found a poster or something. Humans is is this not a movie from you? <laughs> or should um, I not no. talk about it? Just let me know. No, no, no. Um, that yeah, that was in the end of uh of a video of one of the videos of under the under the umbra, which I ah, submitted. exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I submitted actually last time around, but um, yeah, I. So the whole idea of that video was sort of r reversing the the roles uh, that monsters that you know we're watching monsters in films, but in that in that music video, like the humans are the monsters, and the monsters are going to the the um, movie theater to see a film about you know all the disgusting things we do, mm -hmm. and that was sort of the so at the end. There, it shows a, a movie poster. Ah, human, okay, so it's what, a mock and, mock up uh, movie poster. Yeah, it was like, and actually, it was like referencing a uh, re referencing an a eighties uh, an eighties like gore body horror film called Demons, mm -hmm. um, made by uh, Bavario Lavo. It's like a, an Italian horror filmmaker, but okay. uh, yeah, um, it's a pretty like niche. Uh, nerdy horror film <laughs> but uh yeah so I, I was like referencing that poster but i made it say humans instead of demons and i put like uh i don't know like a a soldier with a a soldier with a gun and a flag and a businessman i don't know mm -hmm. just like just some okay. like icons of capitalism and imperialism and all that junk yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So yeah, you, you got me there. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like like uh, Quentin Tarantino with his uh, grindhouse trailers or stuff. Um, yeah. You just you just put it in there and and people fall for it. Um, so I certainly did. Um, so yeah, um, if you want, I mean, now we, we could maybe close up the the movie part with. Um, sure. What is your what's your most favorite uh, movies? You know, just for the for the audience, so that we can kind of go to you better in um, because you said already the demons. You know, if it's a niche horror movie, what yeah. what kind of maybe give me your your three top uh, horror movies everyone should have seen or or you mm -hmm. you like the most. Let's let's put you like the most, and maybe you can. Because sometimes you like something that you know you shouldn't recommend to other people, you know, if it's a little bit um, right. too niche or too graphic or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. art house. Yeah. Especially, you know, the Italian. I mean, you, you can talk about this. The Italian. We have some really weird stuff sometimes, oh, you know, yeah. I mean, so it's it's really like. Okay, you know, I mean, you are entertained yeah. the whole time, but at, at the end, you don't know what you're seeing there. It's kind of like really what yeah if, if you're not if you're not watching with the right lens you might you might not be happy with most times you're not going to be happy by the end especially if you don't have a lens to watch older films too mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, which i'm still you know i i do watch a lot of older films but sometimes i have to check myself when i'm watching older films too where i'm just like this is where they were at you know and but yeah back to your your question of my three top films to recommend at least uh i i mean i'm a huge evil dead fan oh yeah me too me dead. too yep um mm -hmm. yeah i mean the, 
that is one of my all-time favorite movies, Evil Dead 1 and 2. I love them both equally. Um, and then, uh, let's see here. What's another good one? Well, uh, Videodrome. Okay. Uh, this uh, is... Uh, Cronenberg. Uh, yeah, exactly. I haven't, I haven't, you know, because I, I saw only the, um, I still haven't watched it. I have to admit, yeah. I know, I know how it, how it goes and, and I've seen stills and, and, and footage and stuff, but it's kind of, it's so uh, body horror, it is called, right? It's, it's so yeah, kind of, yeah. ah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if I, if I ever <laughs> want to, want to watch it, but yeah, but yeah I'm, yeah. you know, I'm not uh, the normal horror uh, consumption sure. guy or whatever yeah and then um let's see here be between mandy which is a newer film mm -hmm. haven't heard of uh Ma mandy and jacob's ladder oh but jacob's ladder is an older one hmm. yeah it's from 1990 um mm -hmm. that's more of like a psych horror a psychological horror um M mandy Mandy is an art house is an art house horror too, but uh, um, it really like transformed the way I look at color in mm -hmm. film. Like it, uh, the color in the movie is just absolutely gorgeous, and Nicolas Cage is in it. <laughs> you know okay. who that is? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, those would be my top three or four. I guess I went with four, but uh, mm -hmm. okay, no, cool, cool. Um... I don't know Mandy, but the others uh, I, I know or at least know of. And I just recently saw a documentary of um, Army of Darkness. And I, I, yeah, you, you left it out and it's it's the most slapsticky one and, and the most easy watchable. But it's still fun, you know, if you... Um, oh, yeah. Bruce Campbell is just like, uh, he's so... Um, so cool, you know. So um, anyway, the perfect person for the. I, I'm 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 a little bit sad that we didn't do more movies in this in this vein. But um, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, people age. It's it's the same with. Um, um, as you are a movie buff, uh, I, I just talked with with another uh, person about um, the 80s action movies you know um, like Commando and, and this is so this is so incredible stupid but it's so much fun to watch and you cannot take it seriously you know it was, we, yeah. this one man army killing all these people and and uh, you know big as a rock and, and not ever once even uh, 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 got a, a, a stray bullet or something, you know. We we, we cannot shoot like um, we have this stormtrooper aim, and it's, it's just anyway. Yeah, I, I like. I was once a movie buff, quite, uh, but now you know with with life taking over, and maybe I will use this as a segue to to get it back to you. So how how are you holding up at the at the um, moment? You know, with most. Um, Artists I speak, they, they use the time, of course, to, um, you know, record new material um, and, and get new ideas and stuff. So um, how are you doing and, and how are you supporting yourself? If you want to talk about it, you yeah. know, if it's too, too sure. uh, personal, just let me know. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm doing I'm doing better than some. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the I, I'm, I'm assuming you're asking this question in regards to like the coronavirus and yeah exactly because there's there's not much i mean um i assume that you are not at the level yet where you can live from your um uh, you know from from the music uh no. that's my assumption <laughs> okay good uh so but you know when what else are you doing um Yesterday I was talking with uh, with guys from Argentina, and one is a surgeon, and the other one is a teacher, and uh, you know. So, um, w what is your day job? Um, maybe, oh, yeah, and, and how how are you? How are you? Yeah, um, getting yeah, along I, right now. I I'm a graphic designer for a advertising company. Oh, okay. So, um, we're we're hurting really bad too for the during the pandemic i mean uh, people aren't paying for advertising right now so it, it's a weird time but i mean i'm i'm still getting paid i'm still going to work uh four days a week now mm -hmm. they, so no I, home uh, office you you really going to work yeah we, well we're a small office too there's only mm -hmm. uh like half my office was for load so like right now there when i go to 
when I go to work at my office, uh, there's only five of us mm -hmm. in the entire office. So yeah, I'm still, I'm still going there. And, um, I suppose I could, I could work at, I do work at home some days. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mainly, I mainly go into the office now just cause there's so few of us, but that's not the case for some of my other friends who work in more corporate, bigger environments. And, um, but yeah, I mean, my pay, my pay was cut just because mm -hmm. we're, we're getting slammed right now. Um, yeah. And as, as far as music goes, I just, I did just come out with an EP, so I wouldn't say I'm burnt out, but I'm, I guess I'm taking a little break mm -hmm. from writing. I have some, so I have some songs that I've, I sat on before that I might be bringing back, but yeah, I, I don't even know where I'm at right now. It's weird. I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm sort of like a in a, a little limbo. I mean, I'm, I'm focusing on trying to promote the EP. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's tough with the genre, you know, there's not a lot of places to put it, but, um, yeah. So I, I guess, I guess since I just you know, I just released the EP, although some artists are, you know, they're already on their next one before mm -hmm. they even put out their last one. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird time right now. Um, there's nothing to, I'm a, I'm a pretty like social outgoing guy and I'm going out on the weekends. I'm still young too. So I don't have a family or, and all that. So it's been really weird to adapt to staying home a lot and mm -hmm. hang out at home. But, um, yeah. And I, I live with, I live with, uh, um, three other musicians too. So, I mean, my, my roommate mastered my EP. We all sort of work together. A lot of the percussion done on my, on my EPs were, was written by my roommate, who's also a drummer. Mm -hmm. So we worked, we worked together and sort of, uh, um, co collaborate on so some of their projects you know I'm involved in or helping and doing their music videos and whatnot so yeah it, as far as per personally right now I don't even know I couldn't couldn't even tell you where I'm at right now like I'm I'm trying to figure out the next step to mm -hmm. I, I'm considering making another music video for Corpse in a Morgue which is another song on the EP mm -hmm. um, but yeah uh yeah, that's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, as I was listening to you, actually, I think you you just tell honestly where most people are because nobody knows where we are. You know, um, e even the politicians and and uh, I, you know, I don't want to go there. You know, you just had the election, um, yeah. but uh, you, you know our. Politicians over here in Germany, they handled the crisis so far quite well. But now it's it's get you know as it as it drags on, it gets apparent that they also don't know really how to handle it. So they don't know it as well. So what you just described is for all of us all over the world. You know, we will have to stick it out much longer than I hoped and anticipated. You know, that at least until most likely the end of next year or so, until we are really over it and right. if there's a vaccine and stuff so it's really annoying and 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 like you just said i was also like i i think i, I got a little bit a small glimpse of a depression or something because it was like oh what can you do you know i i like to go out too you know i'm a social person as well and um I have a band and I, we had a theater project and, you know, everything kind of fell apart. I mean, the band is still there, but uh, we don't do much at the moment. Um, so, um, yeah, it was kind of like for, for us, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a tough time. You know, we're kind of put on pause and, uh, and, and don't really know when we can, when we can start again. So, um, so, so let's let's turn it into some more happy thing. So, what what are you kind of doing to kind of keep your your mind occupied? Because if if we think about this, you know, being just in the darkness, it's not good. So, um, so what's your next project, Sven? So, uh, you said music. You're kind of you just had this EP out, and you're taking a break. Um, so, as you are an artist, uh, what is your your next endeavors, basically? Yeah, well, I, I I really want to I really want to start working with other artists 
Uh, I, I have done music videos for, you know, five or six other artists. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I, I'm a, gra I'm a graphic designer during the day. So I am like using my creative energy to make a living. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when I get home, you know, I'm already burnt out creatively, mm. but I'm trying, I, you know, I, I see some other videographers in the, in the music scene in Minneapolis, you know, who make their living making music videos. So their, their hustle is so much, is so much harder than mine because they have to do it to survive. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm envious of that. Although I know that it's a lot more stressful to do that. But it, at the same time, I, I lack that survivalist uh, ambition to keep okay. working, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so, but really where I want to go next is I, I want to work with other um, artists specific, probably specifically metal, just because the horror, th a horror themed uh, music video just melds well with uh, that genre. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I sort of, I think that's my next step is really uh, like working with an artist in a more collaborative way, um, opposed to me coming them hiring me to do what they want. Mm -hmm. I really want to come on board and meet at the table and say, like, give what song do you are you trying to work with? And here's the story that I see from this song mm -hmm. and, and giving me certain creative control and in, in turn working, working for cheaper because it, it becomes more of my project, too, as it is theirs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. right now, right now, I haven't made a lot of I haven't made a lot of like moves to make that the next step. I mean, all it takes is just making a Facebook post, you know, mm -hmm. but I, I want to have my portfolio ready. So I don't know. Yeah. I think that's the next step is working with other artists and, and trying to establish myself more as a less as a, uh, like, as we spoke of spoke before um, less of just like filming a performance in a warehouse, mm -hmm. you know, and super, hard cut editing um to just sort of show what who the band is and uh what they look like and more of like telling a a linear story because those are the music videos like those are the music videos that i you know that we all grew up watching and remembering the ones that have those stories mm -hmm. exactly. and, or have like exactly. these obnoxious characters mm -hmm. in it. And, and they become a part of the song. When you hear the song, you think of the video, like mm -hmm. that's what I want to do. Um, and it's hard, it's hard to only do it for myself because I can only write so much music and I can only do it all. Mm -hmm. So, so much without getting burnt out. So I think the next step is really working with other artists who are creating music that's dark and the same tone of uh, video that I'm looking to make. So, mm -hmm. and, and, and I do have, I, I did recently just write a short film script, but um, like finances are just not, you know, to do your own short film with a full crew, like it's expensive. And I, I didn't go to film school, so I don't have a lot of those uh, connections that I would have had if I did. Mm-hmm. So a lot when, when like I've made my music videos, like I, I'm building all my own shit. I'm, mm. I'm, uh, you know, I, everything is mine. My lights, I'm not renting anything really besides like in one music video, I rented a car or I, you know, like in the, okay. in that way, but like, I'm really doing everything myself and that can be exhausting. And I really would like to venture out and work with, other people because that's really where you take it to the next level you can't do everything yourself mm -hmm. you have to uh you have to learn to rely on other people exactly and it's yeah. it's actually a good um you know um how you say a, a mature thought because um if you do everything yourself i mean you're in control but uh, you burn out quite quickly And, yeah. and, you know, this was always kind of what where I saw my strength that I found people who are much better in something as I, because basically everyone can do something, you know, like a video today, you use your, your cell phone and yeah, I can hold it, you know, and then you have a video, you know, but right. if it's a good video, it's something completely different, you know, um, so um, I, I also learned. Anyway, I'm kind of saying yes. You, you absolutely have the right approach here because um, 
focus on the things where you are the best or where you can have the most impact and get other people to to chip in and help you know and 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 i think your approach will work quite well if you help other bands to to um get cool videos or something and and you know and they help you when, and you get connections and you know that's all that's one of the reasons we're talking you know i i know you now and who knows you know you might come back to germany and and you know in, in better times maybe and and uh, a film yeah. a performance over here who knows you know you never know um i just wanted to circle back to your to uh necro disco um yeah, yeah. you you started this project alone right you you were um a, a single um person yeah i i mean i i have a few of my best friends who help record and help They threw down guitars. Like, I'll write... Mainly, like, I would write the guitars. I'd tab them out, and then my roommate would... Uh, my roommate would play it, because he's, like he's, like, a studio guitarist. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, like, I, I, I still play guitar, and I can still shred a little bit, but um, when it comes to recording, it's just easier to let him do it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and he's the one mastering my tracks. Like, I'm, I'm putting... I'm mixing them all and getting all the meat. But when I gave it to him, he's the one who, you know, is really making it sound good. Mm -hmm. So, so I guess, yeah, it technically is me. I'm writing, I'm writing everything. Um, I'm getting some help with the percussion by my, my other friend, Aaron, who, who is, who is uh, at the same level as far as like into like commercial industrial music. We, we both grew up on that. So, so he enjoys like, putting his input because he gets to use those juices that are from a more nostalgic place. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so technically it is a solo project and that's sort of how I, I pitch it. But um, I get a little help here and there from my, from my best friends. And uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, no, my, my question, I mean, thank you, but it was uh, because sometimes um It's hard to find the people you want to make music with, you know. So that's oh, that's why I'm, I ask because, uh, like you said, uh, industrial is more niche. It's not really that, um, you know. It's I don't know, not not not, not a big selling argument. Let's put it this mm -hmm. way. And so, uh, um, yeah, I wanted to. Was it a conscious decision that you that you started as a solo project, or was oh, it because yeah. you could not find people um, who wanted to play with you? I mean, not you know, don't take it uh, yeah. the wrong way or something. No, yeah, it was definitely a conscious decision because I was looking for people to work with, but uh, I even like, <laughs> I was looking for a sitar player for a while. Okay. That was before. Before I will, before I had an established direction, I, I was thinking, I was thinking, how weird could I get this? If I could make some weird dance music with, uh, some weird dark dance music with sitars, that would be cool. But no, um, I could, I just couldn't find a group. And if I, if I ever were to perform Necro Disco, I would be just doing it with my roommates mm -hmm. because they, they all, they all know the music already. Um, But yeah, no, it is really hard to find people to work with. And I, I started this project sort of with the idea of, okay, I'll put this EP out and then I'll find people. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be able to say, hey, listen to this. Is this something you want to do? But it just ultimately got put out. And, you know, I guess, I guess I didn't have an interest in playing shows yet because the first EP, while I liked the tracks because I wrote them, listening to them more objectively like that's not the sound i was going for or that's not like and like we said before like i am still finding my voice mm -hmm. so the second ep is a lot more what i'm looking for but i think the third you know my third release will be maybe a little bit more approachable to play live and maybe that's where i'm heading okay i'd, I'd like to get a band but right now obviously that's super tough mm -hmm. okay. um but yeah that that is the plan i guess i guess doing this calling it a project and working on it alone is a way for me to be in control and get things done without depending on other people but it also is like an easy way out too where i don't have to perform it live and that's something that i value 
a great deal because I grew up playing shows and I really want to perform, mm-hmm. but I, I need, I need the art. I need the cool band, the, the right members to do this. And, um, that takes a lot of work too. So, I mean, I, I'm going to be conscious with how I move forward in writing to really like nail down how I could do this live and yeah. Or who knows, maybe by the time I write my third one, it gets even more electronic and it becomes more exactly. of an electronic and it would be easier for you. Yeah, it would be right, easier right. because that's, that's, um, I, I talked with one guy and I'm, I'm really like was, man, you have <laughs> balls of steel because he, he is uh, also uh, an industrial artist, uh, Seraphim, if you want to look him up. Um, okay. And uh, I really like his music. Um, but he's he's one guy alone with his guitar playing to backing tracks and and you know doing shows and and he he's actually quite good at it you know but but it, uh, the point is for me you know it takes a lot of guts to do that to be right. alone on stage and he doesn't even sing you know there's just it's just instrumental and he plays his stuff and so I was like oh, man you you truly have guts and and stuff so. Anyway, so that's why I wanted to, to know because sometimes it's not easy to find the right clicking people, and sometimes it's a conscious decision that you want to, you know, uh, like you you have you, you want to have all the 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 threads in your hand and and uh, don't rely on on other people, and it's also, I mean, good, but on where I always see the the shortcoming of just doing it yourself, you kind of uh, already. Um, how you say, uh, you didn't fall into the downfalls of it because you have people who help you with it, you know? Because that's, right. that's always the downfall for me, or at least how I see it, um, that you're so much in your own bubble that you cannot really, you know, you cannot be objective anymore. Of course, you cannot be objective. Right. It's your music, so you'll be very subjective. But um, if you don't have good friends who tell you, oh, you know, you could do this or this tracks on too long or, you know, whatever. So um, and you seem to to luckily have them. And so this, this also answers one of my other questions I ask these days, uh, you know, all the artists, if there is any um, uh, online streaming event or concert or stuff. So I, I don't think this is uh, this is something that you want to do. Um, um, and especially with your background as a, uh, you know, playing in this fresh metal bands and stuff, you know how it is to play for a real audience. So it will be right. really strange to have a camera and posing and, and doing stuff. And, you know, I mean, right. it, it has its, its benefits and it's better than nothing, but it's really, it's, um, yeah, I, 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 I'm also not really into that. I might do it maybe one day, but uh, let's see how how long this whole thing drags on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point. Um, I've been I've been pretty active in like the Minneapolis goth scene as well. Mm-hmm. Um, surprisingly, we actually have like a pretty vibrant scene for goth and I, can, I can you can you just let me know uh, how how big is minneapolis i i don't have it in in my my head mm. That's approximately you don't give don't give you don't have to count for right number yeah, yeah. i don't know i don't um it's not it's not it's not as big as uh I don't know. You want me to look up the size? <laughs> no, no. D- d- okay, okay. okay. D- don't. It's not. It's important. Okay. You, so you you are you're okay. active in the in the golf scene of Minneapolis. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, more active as we have a lot of events. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we did before coronavirus. Yeah, of course. We have a uh, like two different um, promotion companies that put on shows, and uh, they're called Dark Energy and Gothis. Hmm. And, and I, I've, I've actually like been working with them. I designed some of the flyers and involved in that way, but, uh, going to the, going to these shows, a lot of the, they, they bring in artists who like, um, post-punk slash, uh, industrial slash, um, I don't even, a dark wave. Mm Mm-hmm um synthwave these kinds of artists um 
but a lot of the a lot of the performances you see there are like you know two to three people and it's like very synth heavy and um with uh sequencers or you know pads mm -hmm. um, backing tracks most likely and stuff yeah mm -hmm. and backing tracks yep mm. yep <clears throat> um but yeah and then you really you, you can see how these performances these performances can uh work out in this type of music because the the a few industrial acts i've seen are there are a lot of backing tracks it's like a two-man industrial band mm -hmm. and i guess i guess because i am newer to industrial i never i never really I never really knew what that looked like on stage until I saw it. And it isn't as like, uh, it's not like white zombie, like the band, but I get, mm -hmm. or, or like, you know, static X where you have this full band and all these characters and there's like this cinematic feel to the stage show. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, my dream is to have something more like that. And that's why I like the idea of a band, but um, what I've been seeing in the goth with in the goth scene and these shows are m much more um much more digital performances what but but that is what it is now you know so mm -hmm. uh yeah, it, it, yeah. Le it lends it a little bit you know from from my perspective of course you know i i know what you mean you know the early goth bands kind of if we're all punk bands you know post post punk bands um yeah and and just called it goth uh, because we were playing you know a, a little bit differently um but It, it lends itself a little bit, uh, you know, using synthesizers and stuff uh, to the coldness of dark wave and dark pop and stuff. So so I, I completely, I, I don't mind it, you know, it, it kind of uh, goes with the genre a little bit. So, but yeah. I, I know where you are from and, and I'm from there too. You know, I played for over 20 years. I'm a bass player, um, played in a lot of rock and metal bands and stuff. So I know exactly what you mean. It's, it's odd if you're just like... Um, You have a five-piece band, and then you're only two persons there. And uh, what is going on? Like, like I said, the other guy, Seraphim, um, he's just there alone with his guitar, and it is kind of crazy. You know, I, I would, I don't mind to be on stage, and I like the focus of me once in a while. But with a band, you can kind of hide behind others. You know, when the spotlight is is shared with, and but if you're just alone, uh, it's a little bit different and. And with uh, electronic stuff, it's also different because people know it's electronic, and and you know you hit play <laughs> and then it starts, and you just do your your stuff. So, um, but yeah, uh, if you if you sell it well, uh, it can work. You know that's that's yeah. um, that's the thing. And and maybe like like you just said, you you you're kind of new to this, and and you're seeing now. Ah, okay, there's other ways to do things, and and. Uh, and other ways to approach uh, how to to do it live and um anyway yeah so just wanted to 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 cross this off any uh, so but but you talked about um promotions so uh, i guess you have not a label yet right or are you considering uh, to to find a label to to push your music yeah i mean i just don't I, I don't know what level I'm really at. You know, I don't have a lot of people paying attention mm -hmm. just because of how niche the genre is already. I have, I have my friends and family listening. Sure. But <laughs> really, really like on a, on a, uh, a, a, the world stage, you know, mm -hmm. or like, I don't, I still have a lot of work to do before I think a label would even take me seriously. Mm -hmm. I don't have that. Um, I don't have that social currency yet or but okay I, i would where i would a little bit disagree i mean you know first of all i found you so um you know <laughs> I, i'm 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 a nobody that's that's for sure but um but i mean people take notice so i did take notice and you have two uh or if you have just two really great videos out there maybe more even yeah, so right. uh, okay just two And, and so this is, uh, you know, you're, so you're already out there. So, um, you know, there, there's nothing to, to scoff at here. Um, so uh, maybe I can give you some, uh, how you say, energy boost. You know, you, you are yeah. better than you might think you are. But I, I think, you know, you're the, the, the normal doubting themselves artist kind of thing. You know, is it really that good? You know, you know some, some people who don't doubt themselves at well put out a lot of... Um, beep 
uh, out there, you know, and, and because today yeah. everyone can do music uh, just on their cell phone, uh, putting things together and, and send it out into the world and stuff. So, and it's fine, you know, I, I like the... I like that it is easy today and you don't need a label and you don't uh, need anything to, to put out your music. But on the other hand, it's also a lot of um, not so good music out there. You know, uh, as, as I can tell you, as a, as a radio DJ, I get yeah. lots of music. I don't consider music, <laughs> you know, just because somebody put something together. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I can I can just reinforce you. Um, you know, there is more to you than you might think there is. But of course, um, where I think um, what you also alluded to a little bit is you need to have this attitude. You know, you need to get this um, uh, uh, go get it ad attitude to to really pursue it. You know, and and that's absolutely fine. And in this time of you know of a pandemic, it's it's okay to just you know kind of um, do your thing, like you said. You you might the third uh, um, uh, EP might be more uh, uh, geared towards playing live, and then you know, uh, and it might come at the exact perfect time when this pandemic will end, and and you can get out, you know, and and uh, come out swinging, and and that's that's uh, would be the perfect opportunity, and and you seem to have roommates who are you know can fill in quite easily. Yeah, and I think yeah. we don't have so much to do at the moment as well with with music, unfortunately. Yeah, no, agreed. Yeah, I, I, I don't know where the thirty EP will take me. Um, like I said, it it could go more electronic. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Um, yeah, I I'm not that I'm not ready to start writing yet, or I my head's just not there. Mm -hmm. And because it is a project, I am only the. It is a pro and a con that I. I'm only ready to write when I am. Mm -hmm. So, so like no one else is going to push me. So, mm. that's that's a, that's actually a good argument against a label because a label wants a product and it wants to sell and it gives you a deadline or something, you know. And and here you yeah. can say, I'm I'm my own boss. I do it whenever I like it, and I'm just you know when I'm happy, when I do it, and if not, then I don't have to. Right. There's nobody waiting for it, you know. So. Right. That's also a blessing. Um, sometimes it's good, as you might know yourself as an artist, to have somebody who kicks your ass a little bit and gets you going, that you finish yeah. things. That's maybe a good question for you. How do you decide when a track is finished? Because when you work on it and you don't have a deadline, you can, you know, always add more bells and whistles and, and they are an echo and they are something and blah, 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 you know, with the tools today and you use MP, MPC, um, you know, there's yeah. myriads of, of ways to enhance the sound. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I, I really don't have like a, I don't have a one size fits all mm -hmm. answer. Um, and that's a I good guess. answer. That's a good answer because there is no one size fits all. Yeah. Um, I, ge I guess really, really, I, I make the bare bones of the track and the song. And um, maybe I, I depend on my roommates more than I, <laughs> I think I do. They, they really do help. Um, they bouncing ideas off of them and just spending a session writing with them is mm -hmm. very helpful. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how how else to answer that one. Mm -hmm. Nope, that's 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 fine. And and it's actually what I said earlier. It's 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 a good approach because you're not in your bubble and and stuff. And and um, okay, okay. I can only talk for myself. I'm very impatient. I want something. You know, if I have an idea in my head, I put it out and then I, I finish it. You know, I finish a song in one night. And with lyrics and everything. And and then in in the past, I would put it out and. Then I was like, ah, if I would have sit on it a little bit longer, I could have, you know. And so mm -hmm. I, I needed to learn patience. And I had nobody who kind of said, hey, Tobias, stop. This is just, you know, give it a little bit room to breathe, you know, come back in, in, in 14 days and, and listen to it again and stuff. So, you know, um, it's it seems to be you seem to be in a, in a good spot that you have these roommates um who you know it's it's um they're kind of 
in your project as you uh, yeah. realized more when when you think they are <laughs> but right. that's that's a, that's a good thing you know that's uh, absolutely um you know artists need to have um some checks and balances and 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 I think they are your friends, so we don't want you to, um, you know, we want you to succeed. So we want to make it better and also put in things um, of their own, of course. And that's that's what I like having a band, you know, that you're not. Vo Sometimes it's really annoying because you want to get through something and yeah, you do it like this, and, and then it's this whole democratic thing. It's, mm. but um, on the other hand, it's also you make it better and you make it more unique. You know, this is. As you yeah. described in the beginning, where you're coming from, so your sound by itself is already quite unique because there's fresh metal, death metal, metalcore, um, hip hop, and all the stuff you you kind of encountered, and now goth and industrial. So uh, you know you you will make some very unique music, you know. And and I I, I encourage you. I want to encourage you not to. Um, I mean, okay, let's phrase it right. It's cool to to look up uh, where this music comes from and get inspired by it, but don't fall into the metalcore formula or you know there, there's also yeah. an industrial formula and and this you know um, I was listening to a lot of Rammstein lately and mm. I like them really great, but they're kind of you know you can um, you can often see where the song is going and how it's going yeah. and then you know the build up blah, 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 and then oh, and then down and it's it's kind of like um it's okay you know they found their formula it's like acdc playing the same thing over and over again it's mm -hmm. fine but it's kind of it's not so surprising anymore right yeah and i think i think for what they do and there's something to be said about artists who just do just have their sound and they don't ever evolve mm -hmm. there's a, i think there's a beauty to that too um i mean and artists always risk the backlash of evolving too yep um a band like ramstein where you know they they are a huge staple in industrial metal mm -hmm. um, even though it's so simple and so so them um but uh Yeah, no, I mean, I, I did take in a lot of influence from Rammstein. I, I, I always imagine that <laughs> German people don't like Rammstein as much as Americans do. Yeah, but, um, it's true, unfortunately. You know, it's kind of yeah. like uh, in German, as we're saying, the prophet is nothing worth in his own country or something. I don't uh, know how to translate it in, in yeah, English, yeah, yeah. but it's kind of... You know, they're, they're big abroad. Uh, yesterday I talked with guys from Argentina and and they formed because they saw a Rammstein concert, you know. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they kind of put the spark in there and, and they're big there, you know. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a little uh, um, industrial leaning artist myself and I can see that the most things I, I get, the most listeners is from Mexico or somewhere in South America, you know. So uh, it's um, over there. You, you will be famous. And that's the cool thing also for you, you know, that with this whole um, um, electronic distribution and things, um, you don't need to be um, uh, successful in Minneapolis, but lots of people all over the world listen to you, you know. This is yeah. um, um, maybe this is the, the last thing we, we talk about, if you want to talk about it. Um, what kind of promotion do you use i mean we met on submit hub so this is a mm -hmm. promotion tool where you can submit it to radio stations and blogs and and as playlisters spotify playlisters and stuff so what else are you doing to kind of um you know get noticed yeah i mean i i've got a couple different approaches uh submit hub i i used um and then instagram and facebook marketing mm -hmm just promoting on there. Although I, I have very little success with Facebook marketing, but Instagram, Instagram has been a lot more receptive, mm -hmm. but uh, like a strangely, the demographic that was most receptive was ages 13 to 17 in England. So really? <laughs> well, wow. teenagers or something. I don't <laughs> Okay. But Yeah, it happened two two promotions in a row. It was the same one. I like I mm -hmm. switched it up too to see Or I, I added more. Um, did, did like an A B test or something? 
Yeah, yeah. I, I added more uh, locations to advertise it in, and it was, again, it was England. And so mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if that's just a coincidence. Um, and then I've, I've been submitting to like industrial blogs, like Brutal Resonance, mm-hmm. um, uh, and a few other ones. I, I don't remember the name. Sideline. I don't know if you know of any of these. Um, yeah. So I, I guess, I guess I'm still figuring out that too, like where to send it. I've sent it to a few like local metal radio stations here. Um, even though industrial is niche, if it has the sound of, uh, like white zombie or mm-hmm. if it mimics that, I feel like it, it also is a very safe. Mm-hmm. It's, it's palatable. Safe. It's, it's kind of yeah, um, easy yeah. to digest. Right. Right. Mm. So I've been with that idea in mind, I've been sending it to radio stations. Not that I even listen to the radio, mm-hmm. but I could see you should. Like, There's a good radio show out there <laughs> every Friday <laughs> at 5 PM UTC. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. if if you sent me your your song uh, um, uh, um, here, the the last one. Oh, sorry, um, um, at the umbra after no, under under the, under the umbra. Um, yeah. uh, I can play it in my show, and I happily sure. do. And then I can cross promote it because I can say, okay, and if you want to know about him, you know, there is the video yeah. for you. So yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll surely do that. Okay, cool. yeah. So. Um, I'm I'm kind of through with all the things I wanted to talk about. Is there something you wanted to to let the audience know? Um, any words of wisdom, advice, or something you you want to close this talk here with? No, I don't. I don't, <laughs> I don't have any legendary ending. Sorry. <laughs> okay, that's that's absolutely fine. No, but it's it's actually you know. Um, Honestly, I didn't know what what really to expect uh, with you, you know, and um, I talked with a lot of Americans and, um, you know, I like America. I, I lived there for a year once in, in Washington, D.C. So, um, uh, but yeah, you're one of the honest Americans I ever talked to, you know, and, and uh, because the, the Americans are mostly perceived like, you know, a very show offy and, and very um you know kind of yeah you know easy to talk something to say to everything even if they don't have any clue what we're talking about and you seem very thoughtful and um you know uh um yeah very a very nice conversation thank you for your time i really yeah, i really enjoyed it um If you ever have some some new stuff uh, or you think we should talk again, just, you know, get in touch with me. You know how to contact me and um, please send me the song. I'm uh, I already scheduled the next shows uh, up till, um, I think, mid December uh, this year. So um, it will take a while until I will play it. But um, yeah, I will play it nevertheless. Great. Yeah, it was awesome talking to you. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good um, rest of it. I mean, your your day is starting, mine is ending. Um, have a good uh, rest of the day. Goodbye. Yeah, you as well. Bye. <laughs>